going to continue with the base mesh of our character by creating the eyelids. Select your eyeball subtool and duplicate that twice. One will be our eyeball and the other two will be our upper and our lower eyelids. Select the clip rectangle brush. Now we're just going to drag over a square and this will be our upper eyelids. Select the lower eyelid tool and do the same thing. Press R on the keyboard to select the rotation tool. Pull out the tool where the eyeball would pivot and rotate the lower lid down. Select the upper eyelid and rotate that up also. Use the move tool to pull the eyelid into shape. By looking up at the lid, I can make sure that it doesn't stick out too far, and then I can just use the move brush to pull it back into position. At this point, I can also shape the eyelid to look right. And now I'll do the same thing to the lower eyelid. For this character, I'd like to rotate the eyes slightly. So I merge all three subtools together, my eyes and both lids, and then use the rotate tool to give them a slight angle. Now I hide the eyeball and use the split hidden command to separate the eyeball from the eyelids. Now it's time to merge together all of my subtools except for the eyeballs so I can get ready to dynamesh it. I just simply use the merge down command until all of the tools except the eyeballs are in one object. This is now a good time to tweak my character. I use the move brush to move things around as a whole, and the move topological brush to move individual elements. I'll go ahead and add a shoulder sphere, just for fun. I think that looks alright. I think it's time to go ahead and dynamesh this character. Dynamesh is the way we take all of these individual elements and join them together into one object. In your geometry palette, make sure that dynamesh is on, and then just control drag in the background. This will activate the dynamesh. The default settings are fine. It might take a few seconds for ZBrush to calculate this. You can now see that all of those objects have now been joined into one. I'll now use the Smooth Brush to soften any edges. I can also use the Move Brush to make a few tweaks. It's always a good idea to check out your character from multiple angles. If you make significant changes, there's no problem in just dynameshing the character again to clean everything up. I need to modify the mouth cavity slightly. So I'll start off by masking around the lips. I'll then use the inflate brush to expand the mouth cavity. I'm now going to show you a really cool trick. Go down into the Display Property menu and click Flip. This will turn your mesh inside out. Then use the Move and the Inflate brush to shape the inside of the mouth. If you use the Move Topological brush, it'll help keep down the movement of the outside of the character. When you're done, go ahead and flip the character back to normal. To finish up, we'll go ahead and just dynamesh the character again. And this about completes our base mesh.